Welcome to another episode of Racing and Learn. We are a nonprofit that uses radio control to get kids excited about math and science. We're doing a quick backyard bash here with our ECX amp. Now this is uh, fresh after we did a, a bash at the beach. So everything is still running fine. Once again, we did a, a wash down of the truck and we greased all the, the bolts, uh, screws, bearings with some WD-40 and wiped, down, wiped it down after the, the beach run just to get that corrosive salt off. a fun little truck. Now this truck, this isn't stock. We have, um, you know, we are running a Traxxas Electronics uh, in terms of a speed control, uh, actually just the speed control. We're running an XL5 speed control brushed motor, the stock brush motor, a 20 turn. And then um, here we, we are running a, a, a 4,000 milliamp Venom LiPo and for the radio we're using a Tactic TTX 300 set so this this radio is nice because the receiver doesn't have an antenna or it's rather it's an internal antenna but it's nice because especially in a waterproof setup there's there's one less wire one less point of possible entry for uh, for damage. And this is a fun little truck. And it's funny, uh, when I stopped by Evitt's model shop, uh, they, they had a bad experience with the earlier versions, <clears throat> meaning uh, you know, probably 10, 10 years ago, uh, the ECX trucks, the, the, uh, the earlier Ruckus and um, I don't even know what was around then, probably the Boost as well and the Circuit, uh, there were some problems with the slipper clutch and, and uh, apparently it used a conical slipper clutch. Um, and you know, they have changed that to a pad, uh, you know, pad-based slipper clutch. But uh, apparently they had a, a lot of problems with spur gears and whatnot melting. And uh, they said, oh, have you, have you, I guess in terms of reliability, they recommend the Traxxas Rustler and, and Slash and Bandit. But um, we definitely recommend giving the newer generation of ECX trucks a shot because that's what we've been running for the last three years or so. Um, we run the tracks of Slash and whatnot too. You guys have seen in our videos, but um, we've actually had less problems with the Ruckus in those last three years than with our Slash. And the axles under brushless power, you will need to upgrade. And the uh, suspension or the bearing carriers, which I actually shared with this truck here, uh, you do have to watch out for those those ball pivots coming loose over time. A little super glue fixes that right up. Super glue on the the ball uh, screw and ball joints. Is the, the fix for that, but yeah, other than that, we haven't had we haven't had much issue, uh, even under brushless power. You know, with our 10,000 milliamp Venom uh, 2S lipo pack and the stock brushless system, uh, proved extremely reliable. We ran that truck hard. 
so we've been kind of reluctant to push to put brushless power into this truck this is just a great beginner truck um, you know although if you can spring the extra you know, I think it's fifty dollars um, the the ruckus is a much much more capable truck but um, you know just because of this shorter wheelbase I think uh, you know putting in brushless power maybe maybe a smaller um, you know 540 sized canned brushless system you know, one of those just cheap $40 systems that you can buy off of eBay that might be worth giving that a shot just because the uh, the brush system is a lot less efficient and you can feel that through the heat that is generated um, on the can of the motor here like even if I stop the car now the motor generates a, little, a fair amount of heat and that heat is due to inefficiency just yeah that's hot I can't keep my finger on there for more than five seconds which is the test in terms of whether you have something properly geared and this is using stock gearing so Hope this guy cooled down, but thanks again for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let us know what you guys think of these videos, and we'll catch you next time.